All right, this is module 25 notes. This is about the money multiplier. Um, so, so far what we've looked at is um, actually determining what the reserve ratio is, what the reserve requirement is, and how the one of those T accounts work. Um, if you need more practice, remember on those T accounts, there are uh, there's that practice worksheet that I put up on Canvas. Um, so I encourage you to take a look at that. All right, so today we're looking at money multiplier. So the reserves and the money multiplier. Um, the first thing that you have to understand is, is that um, when, when we're looking at um, money, they, there's a difference between the money supply and what we call the monetary base. And the monetary base is the total currency in circulation and the reserves in the bank. So what we mean by remember the currency in circulation is going to be the actual cash that's in circulation, the actual cash that's out there, and the reserves in the bank is the, uh, the money that the bank has um, that they can claim as assets. So that could be um, required reserves or it could be excess reserves. So um, compared to the money supply, on the other hand, the money supply incur, uh, includes the currency in circulation as well, but it also includes um, checkable deposits in banks. So as you can tell, the monetary base is actually a lot smaller than the money supply because the money supply includes all those checkable deposits, which is a lot larger. So, and that makes sense if you think about it because um, checkable deposits, you know, where do you keep most of your money, in cash or in the bank? Probably in the bank. So. Uh, not the same as the money supply since the bank reserves aren't part of the money supply. Uh, checkable deposits aren't part of the monetary base. So there is some slight differences between the monetary base and the money supply. However, when um, we are adding to the monetary base um, in the form of reserves, that does mean that we have the potential to add to the money supply. So the money multiplier is the ratio of the money supply to the monetary base. So we're basically looking at um, the amount of uh, the money supply compared to the monetary base. In order to figure out what the money multiplier is, the multi multiplier will be one over whatever the reserve requirement is. And remember, most commonly, for example, the reserve requirement is 10%. So it's one over 0.10. So if you do your math, um, the money multiplier is going to be 10. Okay. Now, what are you going to use the money multiplier for? Well, first of all, this is the way the money multiplier works. This is that we deposit $100, um, $100 in, the reserve requirement is 10%, so we have to save $10. 90% can be loaned out, so $90 can be loaned out. We, we have to save 10%, so that's $9, uh, $9, right? And then loan out the other 90% so loan out 81% so they're basically creating money but if we continue on with this we could find out okay how much of this is creating money every time well rather than having to add all that up together what we can do is we can actually um, find the total change in the money supply by taking the excess reserves times the money multiplier the big thing here is making sure you're multiplying the excess reserves times the money multiplier so not that initial hundred dollars because remember that initial $100 hasn't taken out the, excess, the required reserves yet. So you need to be able to take out the excess reserves and then take it multiplied by the money multiplier. All right, so let's give this a shot. So try this. Uh, a bank has deposited uh, has a deposits of $100,000 and holds $10,000 in reserves. The required reserve ratio is 5%. So A, how much are the excess reserves? B, if the bank receives a deposit of $2,000, how much is the bank required to keep? So that's new compared to what was originally in there. C, if this bank lent out all of its excess reserves, by how much uh, does the money supply increase by? Totally. All right, so pause the video, see what you think, see what you can come up with, and then play it again. Okay, so hopefully you figured out the excess reserves for this particular bank. Right now it has $100,000 in deposits and it has 10% in reserves. So if the reserve requirement, is, the res required reserve ratio is 5%, 5% of $100,000 is 5,000. So they're required to keep 5,000. However, they have 10,000 in reserves. So if they're required to keep 5,000 and they actually have 10,000, that means the excess reserves is 5,000. So let's say this bank receives a deposit of $2,000. How much is the bank required to keep? So 
5% is the required reserve ratio, so 5% of 2,000. So 5% uh, of 2,000 is going to be 100 bucks. And if this bank now lent out all of its excess reserves, how much does the bank supply, uh, the money supply increase by? Okay, now you can work at it uh, one or two ways, and so I should have uh, clarified this. Uh, if it's loaning out, loaning out all of its excess reserves, well, how much does it have in excess? Well, from here, okay, from A, it has $5,000, okay, that it has as excess. But now we also have a deposit of $2,000. So if it has a deposit of $2,000 and the required is 100 and so the excess is 1900 the total excess is how much? 6900 right? So you're going to have $6,900 times the money multiplier. Well, what's the money multiplier? Well, remember on the last slide I told you the money multiplier is 1 over the reserve requirement. So if the reserve requirement is 5%, it's going to be 1 over 0 0.05. So if you do your math, 1 divided by 0 0.05 will give you 20. So you're actually taking $6,900 times 20 to get $138,000 is how much the money supply can totally increase by. Now, you really have to be careful when you're paying attention or when you're answering these kinds of questions on your test. If it's asking the initial increase in the money supply, they're just talking about loaning out the initial $1,900, right? Because that was uh, going to be from those excess. Or, um, if it's talking about the total increase in the money supply. If you're talking about the total increase in the money supply, then they want you to multiply it by the multiplier. All right, um, on the back of the practice that I gave you in class having to do with the T accounts, there is a couple of questions having to relate to the money multiplier. Um, please check those out, see what uh, you think. Let me know if you have any questions.